Welcome to the Record Time training video on how to set up the Record Time app and sync it with your timesheet in Aqua. First, you're going to want to start by downloading the app at the App Store. Make sure that you enter Record Time as one word. You want to allow the app to send notifications to your phone. That's how it functions uh, by alerting you to record your time. You're going to want to allow access to the calendar. You're going to need to uh, allow access to the speech recognition. That way you can speak to the app. And then you'll see a number of welcome screens here. You're going to need a, a corporate code to authorize the app, which you should have by now. And if you don't, we can uh, get you one. There's a, a customize screen here that talks about setting your calendars, and we'll walk through all that. There's the utilize screen, and then there's the socialize screen. So once we're clear on all of those, we uh, enter in our name and our corporate code, and we come to the opening page of the app itself. This is the landing page of the app. As you can see, there's quite a few things going on here, but we're going to start in the upper right-hand corner where we've got the little gear here. That's the settings. So you press on that, and you navigate here to the screen that shows you four different things. The top is your primary calendar, and that's the first thing that you want to establish. You'll note that the Record Time app does not have any calendars of its own. So when you press on this little space to select your primary calendar, you're only going to see the calendars that you have authorized on your device. If you don't see a calendar there that you want to make your primary calendar, you'll have to go back into your settings on your phone and actually activate the calendar on your device and then it will show up as an option within record time. So the calendar that you want to make your primary calendar is essentially your work calendar. Uh, it's, the, it's the calendar that people place meetings and, and, and such on because the app will verify those meetings with you and that's where your entries will be stored. For people who have admin support or who want to share their entries with finance or accounting, we have a secondary calendar. As you can see, I have not selected a secondary calendar, but you can select however many secondary calendars you want the difference between the secondary calendar and the primary calendar is that the app does not ask you to verify events that take place in your secondary calendar. It only asks you to verify events that take place in your primary calendar. Okay, once you've established your primary calendar, now you need to establish the operating times for the app and the notification intervals. And that's what happens here in this next space. So if you press on this bar, it opens up your options. You can either have the app work the same time every day, in which case you want to toggle this on, and then you press the little blue bar here, and this is asking you when do you want the app to start, when do you want it to stop, and what is the operating interval that you want it to notify you to record your time. So you just simply you know, scroll through whatever you want, set it for whatever period of time you want. You can set the notification interval for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, every four hours, or just once a day. We recommend leaving it at an hour. An hour is generally, for most agency personnel, it's not too often, but it's often enough that you can stay on top of what's happening throughout your day. Whereas if you make it every four hours, sometimes it can be tough to remember what it was that you were doing four hours ago. So we recommend leaving it at an hour, or if you're having a really crazy day, make it 30 minutes or, or even 15 minutes. Once you've done that, just press the done button. If, you're, if you turn off the everyday option, you can go in and select the days that you want the app to uh, operate independently. And you can even change the operating times and the operating intervals for any individual day. So you can customize this as much as you want to. What we recommend is that you turn Saturday and Sunday on, and then you make the operating interval just once a day. That way, if you do wind up doing billable work on the weekend, the app will ask you at the end of the day, it's not gonna ask you throughout the day, it's just gonna ask you one time at the end of the day, did you do any billable work? 
And if you did, great, you tell it and now it's captured and now it will be synced into your timesheet in WebVantage. If you didn't, then you just close it. And you know, that's how that works. So that's what we recommend. Once you've uh, established your operating times, we can go back to the home page here. Well, actually, we'll talk very quickly about the end of day feedback. This is only available for the iOS users, so for iPhone users. It'll be rolling out in Android soon, but right now it's only available for iPhone users. Uh, you can toggle this on or off, and what it is, is at the end of the day, when you've completed your last entry, you'll be served a little box that has three emoticons in it, a happy face, a meh face, and a sad face. And it's just gonna ask you, how did your day go? And you can choose to respond or not. Like I said, you can turn it off here if you don't wanna have that come up. But sometimes it's actually nice to record how your day went. You just select the emoticon. It will then ask you why you felt that way. Again, you can just close it if you don't wanna record anything, or you can just tell the app why you felt that way, that data gets stored in your calendar, in your primary calendar, in the notes section, and you can go back and review it whenever you want to. It's a way of kind of tracking how things are going for you. And in fact, we have a statistics dashboard here. If you go up on the upper left-hand corner of the app, you see this smiley face. If you touch on that, it pulls up the data that shows you, and obviously, I use mine for demos, so <laughs> my data is not showing up here. Um, but it shows you for every day for the past two weeks how you've rated that day. And then it gives you an average for the month, and it gives you an average for the year. So this is a great way of just monitoring your mood um, in your job. And if you're starting to see a lot of angry faces or whatever, maybe it's time to have a conversation with your manager about that. If you have more questions about the personal statistics, you see this little uh, circle I in the upper right hand corner of the box. You just touch on that and it opens up a page on the Record Integrity site, which is the manufacturer of the app, and that they, they talk about how mood tracking works uh, in the app. Okay, uh, touch outside the box anywhere to make that go away. And we can talk a little bit about the bar below that, which says your rank is newbie. So. The Record Time app has ranking, and you advance in rank based on how quickly you respond to the notifications to record your time. There are a number of different ranks. If I touch on the bar, it brings up a company statistics page. This shows me how many people are at which rank within my company. Now I can't drill down and see exactly who these individuals are, but I know what my rank is, so I know whether I'm lagging the pack or leading the pack or somewhere in the middle. Obviously you can share with someone what your rank is if you want to, but that's considered private data from our perspective, so it's not publicly available. Uh, same situation here, you see the little circle I, if you touch on that, it takes you to uh, the Record Integrity site where it has details on how ranking works. So we touch outside of that. So again, just to reiterate how this works, when you're served the notification to record your time, if you record, if you activate that notification and you make your entry within the hour that you get that notification, you'll see the little blue bar here, advance and move you forward. And when you complete the bar, you move to the next rank. Below that you see the uh, streak. Streak is a very well-known uh, gamification element. What it does is it, re it rewards you for completing all of your entries for the day consecutively. So as I complete my entries day by day, I build a streak of however many days I successfully complete all of my entries. If I fail to complete all of my entries for any one particular day, my streak resets to zero. So if I complete all of my entries for 30 consecutive days, my streak is gonna show that I have a 30 day streak. That actually plays into the achievements that you see down in the bottom right hand corner. There's a tab here, if you press on that, 
it brings up the achievements page and here we have a lot of different badges some are tied to just operational aspects like the voice entry badge that you win when you make your first voice entry and you can share these by you know social media or whatever but um, there are badges that are tied to usage like this one um, or is awarded to you when you've used the app for 20 days not necessarily 20 consecutive days but 20 days of usage whereas we also have streak clubs this is a 30 streak club that you win that batch when you uh, achieve a streak of 30 days so uh, the ones that are in full color are the ones that you've earned the ones that are kind of grayed out are the ones that you haven't earned yet but if you touch on them you'll get the information on how to earn them now that you know how to set up the app let's take a look at how to actually use the app, and then we'll look at the integration into Advantage. Here we have an example of what your phone looks like when you have an outstanding entry. You can see up in the top uh, left-hand corner, there is a badge on the icon that tells you you have one outstanding entry. When you press on the app, it opens up the page here that shows you what that entry is, and all you have to do is just touch the entry and start talking, and it will record what you're saying. So as you can see, it was recording what I was saying. So I press the little pause button there. I can press start over. And if I tap into the screen, I can just type in, you know, test entry here. And you get a sense of how this works. It's very straightforward. You press the little checkbox, kapow, and there you go. This is an example of the end of day emoticon. It's asking me how my day went. Was it unhappy, neutral, or happy? I had a pretty good day today, so I can also skip this, but I had a good day, so I'm gonna press happy, and then it's gonna ask me, why do I feel that way? And uh, that you want, you can type it in here, right? Great, great day, great day, whatever. And then I press entry, and there you go. My streak advanced to two, and that pretty much covers us for the functionality of the app. So now we're gonna have Dan walk us through how to pull the data that the record time app is storing in your calendar into your timesheet in WebVantage. I'm gonna to go to my timesheet in Aqua and I'm gonna to go to copy from my calendar. A one-time setup will connect the calendar to your WebVantage account. Once that's done, it's simply a matter of getting calendar time, selecting the day or range of days that you want to get the entries for from your calendar and get the selected days. And here are the entries directly from my Google Calendar. Now it's just a matter of assigning it to the correct job number. And we'll grab the first couple here. I'm going to select those. And I'm going to update my timesheet by inserting the rows onto my timesheet. And you see in the background here that those entries are now in my timesheet and they have disappeared from the list that I've gotten from my Google Calendar. In the actual entries, the comments will be what you had spoken into your phone. And the hours are also picked up. It's that easy. Now in this case, you notice that everything is in one hour increments. That's because that's the way that phone was configured to remind me to do the actual entries. If you're working on several jobs within that one hour period, then you can just speak that when you're putting that entry in and then that information would come here and then it would just be a matter of breaking it up in 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever the increments are, 
and create additional entries for that particular hour long period. You could always go back, copy from my calendar, and then see the entries that you had not yet assigned to your timesheet. So that is it. It's actually, as you see, very simple to add entry to your timesheets using the combination of the Record Time app and then the integration with the WebVantage software.